think I should say, well, the pleasure is all mine. Um, thanks for inviting me. I really feel privileged to be part of that discussion here. And, you know, I wish I had this, I wish I had had this chance when I was a postdoc. Um, so it's really great to have that forum where you can, you know, share ideas and discuss them also with people from outside. It's, it's really a great thing. Um, and maybe I should say a few words on my personal background and my biography. Um, personally, I come from Berlin. I really grew up there. And when I was a student in the 1990s, uh, gentrification started to happen right at my doorsteps. I lived in Prenzlauer Berg, which is now regarded as, you know, the poster child of gentrification in Germany. Um, and, but back then, um, nobody in, in Berlin and or next to nobody in Berlin, maybe except for a few dozen geographers and sociologists would know that term gentrification. So I only learned it through urban studies seminars and I was struck, you know, on how much what I could read about New York, how much that reminded me on what I could see at Kollwitzplatz, right? So that was on the one side, the rather generalizing, universalizing take and the way that a concept like gentrification informed me and what I could study right at my doorsteps. Uh, on the other hand, I always kept struggling uh, with differences because I mean, quite obviously class composition, racial race relations, governance matters, property rights are organized in very different forms in the US and Germany. So I kept, you know, struggling back and forth between applying gentrification and being uncomfortable with it. Um, and I think I kept, uh, I kept struggling with it. Um, the last thing I did was writing a book of which I just published a manuscript on gentrification public and public policy in London, Berlin and St. Petersburg, uh, where I tried to sort um, the relation of generalizability and particularly particularity out. Um, so that's, that's for my background. Um, against this background, I find your the questions you put in the description of your workshop are very, very accurate and very timely. Um, I think you asked, let me check it again. Well, you ask how we, how can we go beyond using mainstream concepts as part of variegated forms in different geographies on how we can concept, conceptualize differences. And then I think these questions are very much at the forefront of, of a key debate in urban studies at the moment. And especially with regard to, to gentrification, the situation is by now a bit paradoxical. On the one hand, gentrification as a term, as you all know, has been invented in the, 90, in the 1960s. So it's now more than 60 years that we study gentrification. Meters of books have been written about it. I think we have most likely hundreds of case studies now for cities as different as New York, Oaxaca and Osaka. Um, so one could think we, we actually know everything we could know about gentrification. The situation, however, is that the term has become very controversial and we find both researchers which argue that gentrification has now become a global phenomenon, although with variations, and other researchers like uh, Ash Gertner, who claim that gentrification would be a concept uh, that builds a Procrustean bed to urban studies uh, that only fits to a handful of northern cities in the 20th century. And I quote that it should be laid to bed together with the other concepts that we once used. So gentrification more than ever before is, is under attack. Um, I find this important because I think implicitly or explicitly most of the papers which I read for today deal with the matter of gentrification and try to define their place within that debate. Um, so when I thought about what I could say with this mini keynote, uh, I first wondered uh, what I could actually contribute. Yeah, because obviously uh, you all know this debate and you know the state of affairs in urban studies. And the one thing I thought which might be useful uh, would be to take a step back and look on broader debates in history and social sciences, which have for a long time dealt with the question how concepts can be used to inform comparison. 
because as a matter of fact, the difficulties of comparing complex empirical phenomena uh, are not new and they are not um, just in the field of urban studies. Um, quite contrary, I think the problem to bring together shared essence of a phenomena with different appearances have haunted philosophers uh, since, um, well, at least since the age of the Greeks, you know, the Greek, the Greek philosophers. Um, and the one thing I wanted to um, bring to this discussion is a scheme, an idea developed by Charles Tilly in the 1970s and 80s. Um, Charles Tilly, actually writing about complex phenomena like revolutions, um, developed the idea that uh, we can actually sort out four different ways to do comparison, which he called individualizing, universalizing, encompassing, and generalizing comparisons. So the idea is um, that on the that you can basically compare, well, that comparisons are sorted by their scope, but also by the number of cases that are compared. And I shall take a few minutes to, dis, to, to, to just describe these four forms of comparison. Uh, let me start with the individualizing comparison. And individualizing comparison um, uses a particular case, a single case, most, most often to challenge a theory or to develop a theory from this case. So individualizing comparisons often work very well uh, when you are dissatisfied with the state of theory and try to make, try to show, to demonstrate that this theory uh, is not capable of explaining a particular case which you know well. Universalizing comparisons do exactly the opposite. They use a single case or a small number of cases uh, to establish a general theory. And I think the rent gap, to give one example, which has been developed against the background of US cities in the 1970s and 80s, is a very good example for that. Encompassing comparisons use a group of cases um, and establish a theory. Oh, no, sorry, the generalizing comparison. Hold on. No, I'm struck. Generalizing comparisons use multiple cases. Um, but establish a theory against that. Saskia Sassen's global uh, city theory has been a good example for that. And encompassing comparisons, often also called variation seeking comparisons, try to establish differences within a group of different cases. The point now is that, could I stop that here? The point now is that all the four forms of comparison work well, but they work for different purposes. Right, so the, the point is not to um, favor one form of comparison against the other, but the point is about the conceptual argument they are used for. And I showed you this diagram because I think it provides some uh, route into discussing the various, the various empirical papers that you wrote. Um, because obviously, you know, as an outsider, I really can't tell a lot about, you know, the empirical part of your papers. So I'm not an expert in Swedish planning. I hardly know anything about Turkish cities. Um, so that's definitely not the route I can take. But what I do think, what does make sense is to always ask what uh, your cases can contribute to the way that gentrification or other phenomena are conceptualized and how they are compared to similar phenomena studied in other cities. And I think implicitly or explicitly, all your papers have that form of comparison included. Um, so I think I will stop it at this point um, and come back, uh, come back later in the, in, the, in the discussion to the use of concepts for comparison. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the next three hours and would give the floor back to, to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you so much.